is whatever. You can read my books. I have a, a, a website. It's called pensionreform.org. Can I write here? Can you write it, baby? In pen, pen, pension, www. That is it. Pension reform together. Reform, yes, dot org. Okay, this is a website where there is a lot of information and on Chile and on a lot of other countries that have followed Chile. Now, if you want to read a short uh, version, the, the insurer has been very nice to produce this. I, I have this in many, many languages. Uh, some people have called it, in joke, the, the Piñera Red Book. Not to be confused with Mao Red Book. It's the opposite of Mao Red Book. But I believe that red is a beautiful color. So, I, so why give red to certain groups, you see? So I decided that it should be red, first of all, because red is a beautiful color. It can also be the color of freedom and prosperity. And second, I made it very small because I, when I meet presidents and prime ministers and politicians, they don't have time or they don't know how to read a book nowadays. So, but they can know how to read this. So I give them to this and I said, put it here. And maybe in the tax, in the airplane with a chauffeur, you see they have chauffeurs paid by all of you. So they, in, in that moment, they can read a little thing like this and it is 25 pages. So here really is the essence. And, and it's not for you to learn about Chile, because it's, it's just be, because if you read this, you will understand also the debate in Bulgaria. That is not exactly the same, but the principles, the concepts are universal. So reading this, you understand the debate in Bulgaria, and I understand that this debate will be very important for your lives. See, if Bulgaria does a good pension reform in the future, or how it moves the pension issue, it will affect the whole economy and the whole society. Let me finish then by saying that the Chilean system has created now a, a huge prosperity in my country. My country for 14 years after this reform was able to double its rate of growth. Chile had a rate of growth of 3% during the whole 20th century. And, and regrettably with the 3% rate of growth, uh, if your population grows at 2% as it was, your income per capita grows at 1%. So the tragedy of Chile in the 20th century was that you had political parties of the right, the to the left in government. We had all the experiments, but all the experiments ultimately did not change the rate of growth of 3% that meant a 1% income per capita. And when income per capita of a country grows at a 1%, simply you cannot solve the problems of poverty, of social mobility, of health, of education. So you may have the better intention, you may quote philosophers, priests, uh, revolutionary, whatever, but with a 1% income per capita growth, you cannot solve the problems of poverty, period. So I, I, I was convinced of that. So when I, how I explain this system to the government and to the country, to the countries, with this system you're creating all these savings and investment, all the saving and investment will help the economy grow. And I forecasted that we could have 7% growth. And that happened. For 15 years, Chile had a growth of 7%. Since at the same time, population went from 2% growth to 1.5, it meant that for all that period, Chile had an income per capita growth of 5.5% a year. So our income per capita has been multiplied by three since this process began in Chile. And today, we were discussing with some economists, we have an income per capita at appropriate exchange rate, as a technical idea, but an income per capita of around $15,000. 15, one five. That means that Chile today is the richest country in income per capita of Latin America. You see, and this is very special because you may not know, but Chile, if you look at a map, Chile is a country like this, you see, it's a long and narrow country, so it's very unusual that long and narrow countries get rich, you see. Because we have, we, we, we have all to walk like this, you see, <laughs> in the streets, so it's, it's a very, but anyway, this long and narrow country, you see, here we have, over here, a huge country that is called Argentina. Argentina, at the beginning of the 20th century, was one of the three 
four richest countries in the world with the US, Canada, Australia. So Argentina was three, four in the world. And Chile was number 90, 100, I don't know. Today, Chile is richer in per capita term than Argentina. Even though Argentina has everything, has oil and gas, has wonderful agriculture condition, forest condition. No, Argentina is blessed by was blessed by God until they forgot God and God forgot them, you see, so they are, they are going down. And, and Chile today is richest than Argentina. So a country with no natural resource where, where people have to walk like this in the streets, you see, but still, uh, ideas have consequences, you see. So, and a country with a good pension system explained in a, in a, in a little red book can produce growth and savings and investment and incentive to workers that instead of going to the street to get an early pension or, or, or to make a fraud and have a disability pension, workers now in Chile have the incentive to work longer. The longer you work, the higher your benefit. They have an incentive to save more. The more you save, the higher your benefit. They have an incentive to look at the government very closely because the better the government manages the economy, that is reflected in the bond prices, in the stock prices, in the inflation rate, and the more your benefit. So we have basically put the incentives of the workers in line with the incentives of the country, ultimately eliminating to a great extent a class warfare, you see the idea that the, 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 the size of the economy is fixed and therefore one group has to fight another group and has to hate another group and has to eventually uh, produce violence against another group in order to redistribute a fixed pie in a different way. No, we have an expanding pie, expanding at 7% a year. So when you have an expanding economy and you have the incentives in line, the whole society is a better society. It's a more free society, it's a more peaceful society, and it's a more prosperous society. So that is the basic history that I have come to tell you. Thank you for your attention, and I am, of course, uh, open to any sort of questions that you may want to, to put on me. Thank you very much.